Hello and welcome back to another video. Today is a different one. We are previewing the Champions League final that is happening on Saturday at Wembley Stadium at 8 o'clock in the UK time between Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund. Make sure to like the video and make sure to subscribe if you are new. Uh, we're on the road to 500 subscribers, so if you can get me there as soon as possible, that would be great. We're trying to hear it before the end of the year. Okay, now... It's a bit of a different Champions League final because Borussia Dortmund are in it. They haven't been it since the last time it was at Wembley uh, where they lost to Bayern Munich. Um, no one expected Borussia Dortmund to be here. Uh, managed by a former West Ham assistant manager, Edin Terzic. Um, obviously, Carlo Ancelotti could win his fifth Champions League and apparently it's with three different teams, if I'm not mistaken. AC Milan and I can't remember the other team. I'm trying to go through his career. I can't. It's not coming to me on the top of my head. But Real Madrid are obviously the team when you think of Champions Leagues. When you think of heritage. When you think of winners. That's what you think of when you think Real Madrid. And you can't look past seeing them winning this game. However, I'm sure Borussia Dortmund are going to be motivated by how much of an underdog they really are. And um, how much people are doubting them. Obviously, Jadon Sancho found a new lease of life there. He absolutely cooked PSG alive. Um, someone like Ian Matson was absolutely outstanding uh, in the semi finals. Schlotterbeck and Hummels, a great centre back partnership. Uh, not sure why. I, I'm, I'm sure one of them wasn't called up for the Euros. I think it might have been Hummels. But if I was Nagelsmann, I'd be looking at them too and I'd be like, hmm, you've got something there. I can put that into. The Euros, so I don't know why Hummels hasn't been picked. I think it was Hummels that wasn't picked. I could be wrong. Um, but also, as well, we've got players like Emery Channe. He's an OG. He's an OG of the game. Uh, Adiemi on the break. Like, Adiemi was doing well tracking back as well. His, his off-the-ball work was just as good as his on-the-ball work in the semi-finals. They've got players to hurt Madrid. But for me... Uh, Real Madrid are too calculated, they're too inevitable, they're too experienced, they've got too much know-how to not win this. Now, I don't think it's going to be easy, I don't think Borussia Dortmund will get battered at all. Uh, but what I do think is that uh, with the likes of Vinicius, with the likes of Rodrigo, even Bellingham, uh, he didn't play well in the semi-finals, I have to say, and wasn't the greatest against Manchester City, and especially in the first leg, uh, he wasn't as bad in the second leg. Uh, he seems inevitable in this game because he hasn't done that well in the, in terms of goals and assists and just general performance within the knockout stages so far. He's going back against his old club. It's written in the stars for him to score and it's at Wembley in his home country. It's destined for someone, for one of the English players to score. Maybe Jadon Sancho might get a goal. You, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Dortmund that took the lead and Real Madrid win 2-1. But I think Real Madrid are going to win like 2-0 or something. Get a goal early, then get a goal late. And obviously, I don't think Militao will play. I don't think they're going to rush him back. Um, he's still recovering from recovering from a big injury. There's a there's big talk on whether Thibaut Courtois comes back in after his injury or Lunin, somebody who's been performing well since uh, Courtois has been absent. Obviously, they signed Kepa as the lone uh, guy and they realised that he was shit. So they put Lunin in, and he's actually played quite well. I like to think he actually parries the ball a bit too much, but it actually kind of works in his favour. Just his overall, just as a goalkeeper, he's actually really good. And you can see why Real Madrid, I guess, signed him as a backup anyway for emergencies like these. You've got too many, you've got too much players with experience. Even someone like Vinicius and Rodrigo, they're experienced by now, they're young. But they're experienced. We don't talk about age when players are doing good. So Vinicius and Rodrigo, come on. They're, they're, even if they're young, they're experienced. They're both actually probably better left-wingers than they are anywhere else on the pitch. And it's going to be interesting to see when Mbappe joins them after the final. Um, Kamavinga and Chouameni are experienced by now. Valverde is experienced by now. And they recruit so well because they put these young players around experienced players. Then they have the minds and... IQs and intelligence and know-how of an experienced player. They become veterans at like 23. 
Like, that's how good these youngsters can become around a fantastic environment and fantastic uh, veteran players. Now, is this Luka Modric's last game for Real Madrid? I don't think so. But it is Tony Cruz's last game for uh, Real Madrid and also in club football. I am absolutely I was absolutely surprised when I saw that Tony Cruz um, retirement announcement. I did not think that it was going to be this year. But what a way to end your career by potentially winning the Champions League. And you never know, maybe winning the Euros as well. Tony Cruz deserves to be dining at the table for, for like the best midfielders that we've ever seen. Um, in my lifetime, especially, I've seen... The him, Modric, Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, whatever. Though, like those are the best midfielders I've seen in my life. Obviously, there was that iconic midfielder Casemiro, Modric, and Cruz. That wasn't even that long ago when it's it, like that was when the last they won the last Champions League. That midfield feature. They obviously won the Champions League two years ago. They was probably very disappointed to get battered by Manchester City the way they did, um, in the previous campaign. However. They put on a defensive masterclass against Manchester City in the second leg. They were very good on penalties. Carlo Ancelotti has to get the utmost credit as well. Because I want to go back to that Etihad, the game at the Etihad. He took Vinicius and Rodrigo and I'm pretty sure he also... No, he didn't take Bellingham off. I think Bellingham stayed on, but he took Vinicius and Rodrigo off. Think about it, two of the main guys up front. And he put on... Uh, I think... I can't remember whether it was Hossolu and Vazquez or someone like that. But they were going into penalties and he took them both off. And it worked. Now, you could have said the same if Man City won that when Holland and De Bruyne came off. But they were just having stinkers. I don't know, but Ancelotti is here for a reason. Now, I was one of them people that said when he went to Everton, the guy's winding down his career and he's finished. And then he went back to Real Madrid and I was more than proven wrong. Now, he was already in an all-time list regardless. Even if he was winding down his career at Everton, I'd have him in an all-time list. So it wouldn't have affected my general opinion on Carlo Ancelotti, but it just affected my opinion on him at the time. But this guy has done it everywhere he's gone, pretty much. Like, he struggled at, at, like the most, probably at Napoli. However, at most of the clubs he's gone to, he's done fucking fantastic. And he's such a good man manager. He's very good at, like, he's not like the biggest tactical manager, but he, he's so good at tweaking it. Like, he's so good at tweaking stuff. Bellingham, Bellingham comes in, he runs back the diamond like he used to at AC Milan, an AC Milan team that I wish I was old enough to watch. Um, but he puts Bellingham at the tip of a diamond. Bellingham is almost moving like a forward now. That's why he's getting the goals. Um, Vinicius and Rodrigo split strikers. I'd still think that with Mbappe coming in, Real Madrid probably want, should have that plan B of, you know, the guy that's uh, like the proper number nine in the box. Um, however, Real Madrid know what they're fucking doing. It's not going to be a Vinicius, Mbappe, Rodrigo up front when all is said and done. It's probably going to stick to this formation and it'll probably be Vinicius and Mbappe and Rodrigo might play less games. However, they all like to drift off the left. I think Mbappe is better off the left than he is up front. I think he, he he prefers a big target man up there as well. But the goals that what he's about to do in La Liga will be sensational. He deserves to be in those Real Madrid colours because of how good he is. But going back to this final, like I like you you want to say. Blatant Real Madrid win. Like you would in the FA Cup when he was like Man United and Man City. Blatant Man City win, but Man United went on the win. Now, Dortmund could be doing so well, but in that 90th minute, Real Madrid come alive, whether it's Hosselu, whether it's Rodrigo, Valverde, Vinicius, it could be anyone. They will come alive in that 90th minute. And it's very hard to um, doubt Real Madrid at all. Now, don't get me wrong, it won't be easy, as I just said, because it's going to be hard to get past that Borussia Dortmund centre-back pairing. But that's when you need world-class attackers, and that's what Real Madrid have got. It's going to be a great matchup. That's going to be the key battles, guys. It's going to be the defence of, uh, of Borussia Dortmund versus the attack of Real Madrid, mainly. Because I don't think Dortmund are getting many chances. And I think with the way Rudiger has been playing in these big games, 
I'm assuming he's fit. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for them to get many shots on target, if I if I do say so. But how are you guys calling it at home? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Put your score predictions in the comments to tell me why as well. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. We're the road to 500 subscribers, so we're trying to hit that before the end of the year, as I've said earlier. Social media is in the description if you want to follow me in the email for the inquiries, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.